Welcome back to part two of our conversation with Keith Mickelfelder and Ashley Barada, where they tell us how technology has completely changed the healthcare industry, as well as how you can implement these changes to help your business customize the perfect healthcare plan for yourself and your employees. Don't go anywhere. Part two is up next. Welcome to this edition of Peak Peak Performance Performance Podcast Podcast. with your host, Thor Conklin. Thor will be sharing the necessary tools, strategies, and psychology you'll need to become a peak performer in any area of your life or business. Thor Conklin here. We give you the tricks, the tips, the tools, the strategy, the technology, and the psychology peak performers use in order to get more done and execute at the highest level. If you know what to do but struggle with getting it all done, or simply want to raise your game to the next level, this podcast is for you. Sit back and enjoy. First of all, I'm shocked here. Keith is sitting here at the table and like he's not controlling the entire conversation. Are you sick? (laughs) You need some medical insurance? Sometimes it's best just to step back and let the someone who knows more about something take the lead. I don't know if I don't I don't know if I'm buying that one. You need to buy it. All right. All right, let's jump back into this. Ashley, tell us about My Health Pass. My Health Pass is telemedicine. And what that means is you've got a doc in your pocket, a doctor that you have access to 24 7, 365 days a year. Doesn't matter what day or time you're calling them, a doctor will call you back within 10 or 15 minutes. Um, And could you buy that just off itself? You can buy. For example, I've got my major medical program. I don't use the doctor. I don't want to go into the doctor's office. Some major medical carries this. So if you're here in the Atlanta market, you'll hear Kaiser Permanente has finally started talking about their solution in telemedicine. They finally, they have radio ads. The thing is not all telemedicine is created equal. This is one of the few that's 24 seven, 365. There's 3,100 doctors in the network and there's a wait list for doctors to get on. So we're fully locked and loaded. So think about it as an Uber or a Lyft, okay? You need to get somewhere in an Uber or Lyft. You need a doctor immediately in uh, in the sense of, I need a doctor now. I don't feel well, it's the middle of the night. Or my kid doesn't feel well. I don't wanna sit in a germ-infected, infested doc in a box, and I certainly don't wanna go to the ER. This is one of the best solutions on the planet for that because you'll have a doctor in 15 minutes, which is sometimes faster than an Uber or a Lyft driver. Yeah, you are kind of a germaphobe, aren't you? I've noticed that about you. (laughs) That's not true at all. (laughs) Thor, I've got, this is so innovative. I've got to share this experience. I was put on an antibiotic by one of my dermatologists because I had something going on with my skin and they said this will clear it up. And the antibiotic actually broke me out in rash. I was in a rash from my chest all the way to the top of my head, and I could not figure out what was going on or why it wouldn't stop. It was, it ended up being the antibiotic I was taking. So I woke up at about six in the morning and I had this rash all over my body. I freaked out because I had a big meeting that day and I didn't want people to see me like that. It wasn't pretty. Um, So I went on the Teladoc application and I asked the doctor to call me. A doctor FaceTimed me not called me, FaceTimed me within 10 minutes. I showed him my rash and he said, look, we, we can clear this up for you real quick. He sent a prescription to my pharmacy. I went and picked it up. It was gone by noon. Ashley, wow. can we talk a little bit about how that works uh, in the, some of the companies that are using that would be instant brand name recognition? Because I would imagine some people are like, wow, that's so new. Companies haven't adopted it yet or associations. Can you talk a little bit about that? In regards to the insurance companies? And the, no, in regards to the end user, like Southwest Airlines, for example, Southwest Airlines uses our solution for all of their flight attendants and all of their flight crew. Wow. Think about it. You are flying, you're from Atlanta, your route is to Houston and then to Columbus, Ohio. You get what looks like it might be the onset of pink eye. You're not going to go back to Atlanta and see your primary. Okay. Yeah. That's out of the question. And you have to get on that flight and you can't have a dripping pussy eye. <laughs> You'll get a doctor in that region who'd be able to use a locator on your phone to find a pharmacy that'll be able to fill that script as quickly as possible. Remember, 
you have you have children. They're adults now. But you remember going to uh, going through three in the morning, Daddy? I don't feel well. Yeah, they always get sick at night. Well, everyone gets sick at night. Most people do. And the faster we can treat that, the faster we can create productivity in the workplace too. So we deal with Southwest Airlines, the International Truckers Association, uh, the California Firefighters. Pima, which is the largest nursing college in the country, just to name a few who use our solution already. So technology is really changing the face of healthcare. It is. Yes, that's that's the bridge that uh, Keith was discussing. The, the technology is bridging the gap between the, the, in, the insured and the doctor so that we can get taken care of and knock our illnesses in the bud before they even get out of hand. What are you seeing in millennials? How do they... How are they facing this? And what, what are their challenges? What are they looking for? It's a different buying uh, group than, let's say, Generation uh, X or Baby Boomers. I don't know. Ashley's a millennial. Let's have her answer. Yeah, some millennials, <laughs> exactly. I think well, I mentioned... I mean, a lot of your customers, I'm sure, are millennials. Yes. They're, they have a different buying. You know, yes. look, Uber and Lyft is a great example. Mm-hmm. They want their stuff now. They mm-hmm. want it on their phone and... They want it done. Yes. Listen, as an exer, I just I just cut the cord on cable. I have YouTube TV. I don't I, I don't need a whole bundled package like major medical. I need what suits me. So that's what that's what you're seeing buying patterns across all demos. But I I don't want to answer for uh, a millennial or a centennial because I'm an old guy now. You still so have like a, a home phone, don't you? In a phone book. I have a rotary phone. <laughs> it's uh, actually made out of a tusk from a <laughs> woolly mammoth that I used to ride to school. And yeah, it that's with Fred. it. Yeah, totally, totally. But yeah, Ashley, what do you? All right, let's ask the phone? young girl. All right, so I'm turning 26 this month. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I get kicked off my parents' insurance. So, <laughs> Jason, Nicole, get ready. <laughs> um, so that kind of puts you know anyone who's my age in a niche where you either have the opportunity to buy extremely expensive major medical or you can go on a preventative plan, right? Um, so I'm kind of helping out all my friends with that. Um, and then the other thing is, yeah, a, a millennial or let's say even someone a little bit younger than I, who I think they're still considered millennials. Centennials. Co- cent- oh, there are they centennials yeah, now? Yeah, we're making up names for everybody. Yeah. Yes, yes. Everyone from generations to hurricanes get names now. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so centennials, let's say people who are in college, what are they going to do? Go to the college infirmary where you have to wait an hour and a half before you can see a nurse? No, giving them the ability to talk to a doctor within 10 minutes that it that is bridging the gap for centennials, millennials, Gen X, Ys. Honestly, even baby boomers can um, benefit from this greatly. I myself, I sell Medicare insurance. Um, so this is post 64. This is 65 and above. And individuals who have their uh, so, uh, their medical advantage insurance, they want the ability to speak to a doctor when they want to speak to a doctor. And that gives them that ability. Do you want to put a 78-year-old who's in frail condition or might be compromised into a room full of germs at a doc in a box or an ER? No. Or And is it likely that they're going to be able to make it as easily to the doc in the box as... Uh, as it would to their phone. No. That's that germ thing again, man. You, you got some germ thing going on. I'm it's telling the, you. It's the woolly mammoth horn. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I think about you saying about the 78-year-old, and one of the things I know about my mother and remember very well about my grandmother is they really liked their relationship with their doctor. In point. this plan, are you able at all to lock into a certain, a certain practitioner? One of the biggest critiques of... Tele, telemedicine and remind, remember telemedicine has been around since the 1960s over a telephone okay now we have the advantages of things like Skype or things like FaceTime one of the big critiques is well the person's not going to follow up and that's not exactly true Bray the person can follow up you do have the option when you go to your family practitioner typically my dad's a family practice doctors, so I don't know how thrilled he's going to be with this. Yes, you do create that relationship with my dad, but the illness is usually either referred out or solved by my father. So it's 
really at the end of the day, yeah, that's going to be a problem is that relationship, but that's okay. We still have brick and mortar shops, but we also have a booming e-commerce business. So it's not going to solve everything. Yeah. We knew, used to need uh, people in the elevators, elevator lift operators to help us get from floor to floor. Now we just push a button. We used to need woolly mammoths to go to school. That's right. Yeah. But you know, and there's <laughs> and rotary a, phones. And rotary there is another aspect to this, which we haven't really touched on. And that is there are actually family doctors, practitioners that are purchasing this as an addition to their own company. So when you have people that have chronic disabling diseases like COPD, and they need to have an as a, a um, asthma respirator, um, but they can't get in touch with their doctor because it's seven o'clock at night. This gives them the ability to talk to a doctor when they can't speak, see their physical uh, primary care physician. Through technology, we're making the house call a thing again. Mm-hmm. You should trademark that. We should. Yeah, you're right. On it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you heard it right here. Sorry, that's trademarked. <laughs> Everybody's interested in success. However, only a few are really committed to it. What's the difference? Those that are committed are willing to do whatever it takes in order to get their outcome, in order to get their goals. If you're not getting the results you need and want... Chances are, it's accountability. Who's holding you accountable? I've got a challenge for you. For one month, 30 days, and $95, our team will hold you accountable for what you said you were going to get done in that month to get your goals, get your outcomes done. If, at the end of 30 days, you don't like the results, or you just didn't like the system, we'll give you your money back. The question is, are you interested or are you committed? Keep an eye out for part three of our interview with Keith and Ashley, where they tell us where the Affordable Care Act is headed and how that will affect your business and your personal health care in 2018. See you next time on Peak Performers Podcast.